Guyana's antiquated financial technology infrastructure is so counterproductive in my mind that I consider it an act of violence on the average Guyanese. Welcome to another episode of FTC Guyana, the only YouTube channel where we go over all the stuff they didn't teach you in school. Now, typically we have a very scripted episode, but this one we're doing a little bit differently. I am just speaking off the top of my head, so you're going to have to forgive me if I make any mistakes or any misstatements, but it's just something that was really on my heart that I felt that I need to express to you all as my viewers. I, I have to make a confession. I feel that I have failed you all. That as a dual citizen, I have been afforded the opportunity to be able to use the internet as a means of another source of income for me. It's been the thing that has more or less allowed me to live a life that I want to live or moving more towards the type of life that I want to live. And I appreciate that I have that ability to do that. And so a part of this channel was really trying to share that same ability with my fellow Guyanese, because as a dual citizen, I felt that it was my, it was my imperative to be able to share my knowledge and my ability and what I know to do with my fellow Guyanese. Now, here's why I say I feel that I have failed you. Over the past several weeks, I have gone to no less than 20 different websites trying to find different ways to make money online, but more specifically to buy Bitcoin as a Guyanese citizen. And about like I said, about 20 websites later. And I can tell you at this point, I've taken so many pictures of my passport that frankly, I refuse to do anymore out of fear that my identity is probably currently being used by some Iranian hacker or some Chinese hacker right now as we speak. If you see me buying some nuclear weapons, that's not me, I swear. That is why I say I am done with that, but it does bring me to the ultimate problem is that the whole, financial technology system in this country is basically 20 years behind. It is so antiquated, and that is why I consider it a form of violence against the average Guyanese. Now you might say, violence, that sounds so extreme, George. Why would you use such an extreme word? Well, think about it. What is the word violence? Is it something, an action that harms you? It's an action that prevents you from moving forward. It's an action that causes hurt. Now, since we can identify the various different violence, physical violence, emotional violence, there is also economic violence. If you don't have the ability to get up, to move up, to increase yourself and move to a higher level in finances, then whoever has that system over you is exacting a form of violence on you. So what does that mean? That means that we in this whole cash only system, this overwhelmingly affects the poor man. Even let's take it a step further. Time is money, right? And so the average person doesn't get a lot of money for all the time that they have to spend working. But if you have to take three hours out of your day just to stand in line at the bank to get cash that you've taken a significant part of your working day out, that those are hours that you can't get. So it literally costs you money just to get you your money. And you know, to add insult to injury, the bank is then going to charge you for even withdrawing your money. And depending if you're a certain type of bank, a certain blue bank from Trinidad, I'm not gonna say, which one, they might even take the money right out to your account. What do you do? There is really no real way to try to get out and they make it very difficult. Now, I would say I wanna offer the internet. You know why? Because the internet, correct me if I'm wrong. I want you all to tell me that I'm wrong, but I'm gonna make this assertion, this statement here. The internet has made more people, more money, had made more millionaires, brought more people out of poverty than any single other, in the past 30 years, than any single other invention in the history of mankind, more than electricity more than the car, anything. Because you know why? Because it's opened a whole new system of making money. So because of this lack of financial technology here, we are not only blocked of ways to make money 
from being able to buy and sell items to even produce, even to, to produce this YouTube channel. As a Guyanese, you can't get paid to do YouTube. Even Venezuela. Yes, Venezuela with their crumbling economy and all that's going on, they still have access to PayPal, to YouTube, to Bitcoin, and even to Zelle, to Zelle. I've been using Zelle for well over eight years in the US. Do you know the type of mess I have to go through even to pay my student loans from here to pay it in the US? It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. And so I'm able to do that because I have the privilege and I have the ability to be able to move money and to have communication and content, but not everybody does. Now let's take it on an even more basic level and see how this affects you. You know, say you wanna to go to a restaurant with your friend and you know they have cash, you don't have cash, but you have to split the bill, right? In America or in many other countries, you can just pull out your cell phone, send the money through Zelle, boom, problem solved. You can't do that here, you have to go to the bank. And then let's take it even a step further. When you go to the bank, then you have to worry about crime. And then you have a lot of money. You have a lot of cash on you, physical cash that you have to be concerned about because if somebody takes it, you're gone. At least with digital currency, you have the security of being able to cancel your cards. Yes, this does open the opportunity for fraud, but this is a concern of the modern world that Guyanese need to become accustomed to. We have to embrace and understand that financial technology is moving, that it is growing. It's more imperative than ever that our not only just the public sector, not only just the government, the private sector needs to embrace this as well because they take much of the blame for this. I blame them for this, just for the sheer fact that the government, I don't expect the government to know much because frankly, I always remember what Ronald Reagan said, that you'll never find the good minds of business and government you'll, because business would have already taken them. Probably can slaughter that line, but I don't care because I hate Ronald Reagan anyway. But you get what I'm trying to say. At the end of the day, that we're not able to participate in this economy, that this is denying a lot of people from being able to get up in the world. So then I say bringing it back to the rich people, and this is why I, I blame the private sector. Everybody knows nobody comes to wealth overnight. One, one dirty build, damn. That's literally you are building brick by brick is how you build your wealth. Currently right now, even the little money that I'm making Bitcoin and that I'm making in the stocks, that isn't providing for my income. That is my long-term savings. This is me putting my money into this investment with hopes that later on I will be able to reap the rewards from that. The average Guyanese is not able to do that because of these antiquated laws, these anti-money laundering laws, and they say anti-terrorism. Well, frankly, I call it economic terrorism. Because if you, again, have such a level of violence against support that they can't get up in the world, then what do you do what do you what do you call that think about this taking it because we have to talk about legal wealth because unfortunately this is guyana you know we we all know this is the crime that goes on but if you want to talk about in terms of making legal wealth it seems that for the most part real estate is the only way to make real money in this country but you know what's the problem with that is that you have such an extremely high entrance there's a barrier of entry is so high because you have to collect several million dollars before you can even get your first property these are things that are out of the reach of the average guyanese person the average guyanese saving about ten thousand dollars per month will take them several years before they have the down payment go and do that math and tell me exactly what it is but it will take them several years to be able to make the down payment for one home and then we go and ask why everybody's broken, why they're turning to crime. It's because we're not giving them any other option. And like I said, the rich folks don't see the struggle because they're not necessarily having to build, start from zero. They have already entered into this world. So what does this mean? This means you, then as the viewer, as the average person, you then need to come together to put pressure on the government to find out why is this? Because to my last understanding, we're off of the blacklist. We're, I don't know if we're on the gray list, white list, green list, pink list, what list, but we need to be on the right list. We need to be in a position in which we can have updated financial technology so that it's not a headache for me to do something as simple as paying my GPL bill or even paying my student loan or even something as even simpler as paying the delivery boy for my pizza. That is the end of my rant. I just want to know, do you 
Are any of you guys out there, do you actually know to buy Bitcoin? Please tell me because I would definitely like to know and we want to share that information. Either let us know in the comments or even DM me that we would definitely love to do some work and to collaborate and to let people know about this information. And even because we're all about spreading that information, letting people know, a lot of people may not even think about the fact how this lack of financial technology is affecting them. So share this video with them. Let these people also know just how this is a problem and how they need to actually come together to solve it. Also, be sure to check us out on Facebook where we continue the conversation about history, geopolitics, and of course culture from a Guyanese perspective. And finally, well, you know, if you are learning about just how messed up financial technology is in your country, you're doing it for the culture.